What do you think about Rob, when Robson come in? I was buzzing, to be fair. Oh, man, you fan as a kid. Yeah. First day I met him, right, so I'd had some trouble. The house that I bought, I was telling you about, just, I'd have been having some trouble with drains. Builder had fucking been dodgy with drains. And anyway... With them fucking curries. On, yeah, on Sunday, before pre-season starts on Monday, he's come to me. I'd had a conservatory built, and I caught him. He said he was getting a wagon to pull all fucking shit water out of my footings to suck it all out, and I caught him with buckets on my cameras, pouring it over next door neighbor's garden. So I told him to come round. This was on Saturday it happened. So on Sunday, I said, come round here to speak to you. Well, I've ended up scrapping with him on the floor outside the house. We're under the car. <laughs> 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 so, so a lot's gone off. And we've ended up, so I'm on the floor and I've grazed all my fucking face. Like, so I'm like, what the f-? I'm thinking, I've got pre-season tomorrow, new manager. What do I, I'm thinking, do I tell him I've tripped over at running? Well, he won't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Some feasible bad I'm football. thinking, should I tell him I fall off my bike? He won't believe that. <laughs> And I turned up for training and he's walked up and I've just gone, I've gone, uh, morning gaffer. And he's looked at me and he's gone, and I'm not going to do his fucking accent. <laughs> but he's gone, what's happened to you? And I've gone, and I was going to lie. And I went, oh, I says, I've had some shit with the house I've had built and, I, and I've uh, ended up fighting with fucking builder last yesterday on drive. He went, he punched me at something, went, love all that, we're going to get on me and you. <laughs> 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 thing no. is from the build how did it end up being a fight because the, the builder shouldn't have, hasn't got a leg to stand on you've seen him yeah he was being a, well I Do, thought he would be in a cock but he probably thought I would be <laughs> can't remember how it got into a fight <laughs> feel sorry for next to a neighbour who got loads of shite on the <laughs> garden fence did you get the better of him we were just rolling around not flying. we were big he had hands like fucking shovels to be fair to not <laughs> in builders are like fucking, just yeah. rolling around <laughs> rolling around <laughs> <laughs> It weren't even a proper fight. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't a car we were. <laughs> a car? <laughs> and I t- stubbed all my toes and all because I had bare footed and well, no worse, dragging them along the floor. My toes were sloppy for you. You can't go into a fight with Both of you under car. Yeah, well, it would be. You'd rather monster control. Come on. <laughs> At least put flip flops on. Oh. So. <laughs> flip flops are a waste of time, though, in a fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to trip over them. You may as well go barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a big difference? For yeah. Robson to Warnock. Yeah, all of a sudden, you under Warnock, you know, your team on a Thursday, you work on your team Thursday, uh, stuff like that. And and then Robson come in and it was Saturday at fucking quarter to two, you tell your team. Lads, you know, none of lads like that. Well, I, I, I don't think there's many who do. I think you like to know, don't you? Yeah. You like to know Friday, Friday by 12 o'clock, yeah. really, if you're playing. But Robson come yeah. in and, and we used to get... You know, you've got your tickets for lads, your comps. And like, under Warner, we used to have 60-foot squad. And we'd like, obviously, dish them out. But to be fair to them, unless it were a Sheffield derby, they'd always sort us, need another 10 tickets, they'd give them us and stuff like that. And then Robson come in and he's, he's just thrown an envelope at Morgs at first game, home game. Morgs like, 80 tickets? Oh, they must have given us extra this year. So he's rung Emma up and worked in ticket office. He says, oh, you, I see you give us extra tickets this year. She went, what are you on about? I've always give you eight, ten, so <laughs> 20 you've scored missing everything. <laughs> 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 I've always given you eight, eight ten. Tickets, Obviously, Robson didn't want to give 20 out to a fucking gardener or window cleaner. Yeah, run outside. Tickets, tickets. It's my tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them you could write that question down which manager would do this and you, I think everybody would say <laughs> yeah. Warnock wouldn't they if you out of the all list. the managers that you've ever known who would take 20 tickets out <laughs> for the window cleaner the car washer the gardener the landlord at the local <laughs> I've always given you an 80 <laughs> <laughs> under Robson and all like, it were one of them so we, my wages went up went into Premier League but then come back down but they offered me a new deal and we were away pre-season. They were putting my wages back up to the Premier League. And uh, I've gone into his room with Chief Exec, Terry Robinson and Brian Robson. And he had a fridge. There must have been 150 bottles of Budweiser in this fridge. I've, cut, I've had 89 bottles before I come out. And I've gone back downstairs to the lads and the like, all signed, is it? I went, well, I've signed some. I don't know what I've signed. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm fucking Steven. laughs> I don't know what I've signed, but I've signed some of the lads. <laughs> What were we like in a pre-season? Because who, who did we... We've had a few. Jeff, Kev, yeah. Kev Campbell. Kev Campbell said that he all, all the legs, like he could put them away with lads. Who? Robson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He used to join in training, pissed still. He'd be still pissed from the night before. And before it, apart from running, his touch and passing would be best in fucking... Do you know in Duke Circle? He'd be fucking better than everyone. Was he a good manager? 
I didn't like, I didn't like him. Me personally, but everyone has their own opinions on people. Just as a manager, did you re- like him as a person? But no, because I just felt like he was sloppy with everything. Like, like I said, he hated him and his team. I remember when it's a tanter involved. He used to have that five twenty-five kickoff or summer. Yeah, at, at silly Sounds o'clock. Cool. It was stupid kickoff time, and we we're playing away at Bristol City, and we were like, it was like four twenty-five. We're kicking off in an hour, and he's walked in the dressing room. He's like, "Why is no one getting changed, lads? We had not named team graphic. and he's like, "Oh shit." Just little things like that. And I used to go out an hour before to warm up, start, yeah. and, and all of a sudden I'm still not sat there fucking changed because you didn't want to get changed because you didn't know. Just it must have been mad like sat that. there. Obviously, he's one of your heroes, isn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> Straight away, it's just. Straight in the dream. Yeah. Never meet your heroes. Mm-hmm. Mm. How long did it last? Wasn't. It was about six months yeah. or something, if that. And Blackwell took over. Yeah. Did he. How was he as a manager? He was all right. He was one of them. He was just fucking loved to shout. Yeah. Everything were a million mile an hour. Focus more be on you as a goalkeeper. Obviously, with him being a goalkeeper, he question failed. every goal I let in. Yeah. Even if it weren't my fault, could you have told him fucking oh, no. thirty yards down pitch to fucking come in? I can't fucking tell someone thirty yards away to fucking. And it was just little, always a little digs because he were a goalkeeper. Mm. That must have pissed you off. Oh yeah, it used to yeah. But my goalie coach, we. Were, Quite close, and obviously he'd say, "Listen, ignore him, fucking." <laughs> He's just nitpicking. Yeah. Were they similar in in styles of manager? Though, because obviously they worked together so long at uh, Blackwell and Warnock. Were they similar in the? Did he? Did he put things forward the same? Did he try and emulate him? A lot. Well, look, to be fair, under Warnock, a lot of things were off the cuff. Do you know what I mean? It was fucking last. Change things at last minute, fucking stuff like that. Sharon's had a dream, so I'm changing team. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? With Blackwell, yeah, we're more structured, like, yeah. but it could be mm. fucking so annoying where we were day in, day out. Just too much, so loud. Was he? Yeah, just constantly getting. He had a fucking idiot with him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> he must have some sense of humour because I've seen an article today saying that if he, if he got a little bit of money to spend at Leeds, it'd have been like Bielsa. Does he actually genuinely think that? That's what I mean. Does he genuinely think that or not? Uh, he, he does, yeah. He will do. When I went into Rotherham, uh, back into my career, just to back up to league camp, Warnock were in, and I, he, and I went in office, and Blackhall there, and he went, technically, I'm the manager. Well, he's not here. I'm the manager. I run this show. And I'm like, looking, thinking, shut the fuck up. <laughs> He'd be quiet as a mouse when he fucking turns back up. He'll tell you to fuck off. Would Warnock tell me? Oh, like, just be quiet. Time. Shut the fuck up, Blackie. You're doing me head in and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and he just walk off. <laughs> he didn't go fuck. Yeah. <laughs> do you think when he? Do you, do you think because of how one was with him, it made him when he was a manager, like more, like what's the word? At the stamp his authority. Yeah. yeah. Because obviously you've seen one tell him to fuck off. Do you he belittled him. Like and then well, he, he, had, like he, he obviously didn't belittle him if he said Blackie fuck off. Yeah, he's you're doing me fuck. Then he had to. Then he had to. Yeah. He felt that that's why he had to be too far the yeah. other way. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> though, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. Can you imagine, <laughs> imagine like twenty lads warming up and that, and he's just gone Blackie fuck off. <laughs> you did me fucking head in. He's his assistant manager. <laughs> but yeah, that makes sense then. I bet you it was like that. That he mm. felt like he had to. Show a bit of authority and, and be too far the other way. Yeah. But it was certain, some players though couldn't, that like I'd had an argument battle with him, but then you, you must have known, obviously, there were certain players, you can't shout them like that because they fucking drop, don't they? They go yeah. under, don't they? And then there's certain players that can deal with it and they'll have a fucking pop back. But the same with everyone. His man management work like Warnock's where Warnock, he, he knew how to deal with different, yeah, different so, people, whereas Blackwell would just hammer everyone where some people don't need hammering, do they? No. They need an arm round them. It's mad to think that he was like that because he's obviously watched Warnock and realised that it works, mm. keeping people on side, how to keep people on side, and he just does the complete the opposite. opposite. Yeah. What was the crap with the, the playoff final? Because I think it was Danny Webber, wasn't it, that said that he he dropped oh, he dropped a few so players in, in the, the dressing room. In the, in in the, the showers, showers or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember a bit about that. He fucked up that day anyway. We stayed in fucking Luton. Where the fuck it took us an hour and a half to get to Wembley. All lads are in fucking suits, sweating his bollocks off. Fucking, because he lived from yeah, Luton. He wanted to stay yeah. at Luton in a hotel. It took us an hour. We were fucked by the time we got to the game. But, Just see that you didn't think how that would affect 
big people. It does. Yeah. Stuff like that does affect, doesn't it? As soon as lads are getting off course, like fucking. Yeah. But, but like that pre, that, that, do you know when you have your break between the semi final and the, and the final? It's like whatever, 12, 14 days, isn't it? We went to uh, I think we went to Portugal. And it was my birthday, I were over there. And we'd gone out. And we'd, he'd let us go out for a piss up. And he turned up to a fucking bar. And he, I remember him speaking to Carl Sarant, who was a fitness coach at the time, like a piece of shit, and I've had a pop at him. Nearly ended up fighting with him. Morgs had to break it up. <laughs> you you are? Yeah, this is a week, fucking week before playoff final, and I'm nearly fighting with him in this bar in fucking Portugal. What was he like when he was off duty, like having a pint with him? Oh, no. He'd, no? No, nah, he wouldn't have a pint. But I'm trying to drink. find positives for Ken. Yeah, like, I, I can't find any. No. Nah. <laughs> if you'd have said any. he was hilarious after a drink, I'd have yeah. been. That's fair enough. It was like when I come back. I come back from my ban, so I've been banned for fucking nine months. Come back, and he's told Andy Leaning, goalie coach, I want Paddy crawling off that pitch. I got six weeks before I could come back and play, which were the last two games of the season. He was like, told Andy Leaning, I want him being sick coming off that training pitch on his hands and knees every day. And Andy Leaning's like, you know, fine, well, he'll go other way. I've got six weeks to get him fit. Leave me to it. Mm. And he sacked mm. him at the end because of it, because well, he didn't, because, because he didn't do what he said. Even though I still come back paddy fit. Not fit. <laughs> Not fit. I still come back paddy fit. I played last two games of the season. Talk, talking of that, the, the test that I got done, because it was after the, the semi final and the playoffs, me and him played in it, and I got tested the same night. Yeah. And I, thinking back, obviously, it came out that you got, you, you got banned. I remember thinking you were very quiet considering. He just beat us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Did you know? Did you know at the time that that, that you were at a risk or? No, not at all. I when you played that game, we've got to play a final. All I wanted to do would be outside celebrating with lads. And you know what it's like nowadays. The minute that whistle goes, they drag you in. Yes. And someone follows you whether you go for a piss or shit. They've got to see you have a shit, haven't they? Yeah. They've got to see you have a shower. They've got to see you have a piss. And they fucking follow you everywhere. And I, I went in, sat, filled. You've got to fill your forms in. What have you had? And, it lasts, is it seven days, 14 days, whatever. And I just didn't put nothing down. Bear in mind I'd had chesties, Voltarol, paracetamol, uh, Zopoclone sleeping tablets. I just didn't put nothing down. Because I was that Voltarol was basically uh, your anti-inflammatory to just get you fucking into the game. Oh, I lived off them, yeah. basically. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't put nothing down. and I just wanted to get out. So there were nothing, I didn't know nothing that I were at risk or anything. When did you find out? We were in Egypt and it was like probably two weeks after playoff final against Burnley after we'd lost. Just got a phone call, Terry Robinson, chief exec, you've failed a drug test, so like laughing down for him, whatever. And he was like, when you get back, we need to sort it out. And we were like, wow. And I still didn't think much of it. Yeah. You still think like, no, I'm right. not fucking taking yeah. it, so I'm fine. I'm a, must be a cock up or something. Yeah. And I still were like light hard with it, I didn't give a fuck. Did you speak to the doc and say, Doc, I didn't put this down, but I've taken this chest ease thing? He had all my notes. He knew I'd got a chest infection, everything. I'd, he'd, I'd, I'd had a few days off a couple of weeks before with it. And so they knew all this, they had all this down. How is it not being fucking overturned then? Well, I didn't get done for cheating. I got done for negligence, basically. So I should have known what I was taking. Yeah. Gro- I think right. it was gross negligence. So I never got done for. Actual... using anything to enhance my performance to play because we had a scientist look into it with everything I took he basically come up with this thing and said I'd have to take 50 or 60 tablets 10 minutes before a game to get a 10 minute buzz and I'd taken 6 over 3 days better mind I were a goalkeeper and all furthest had to run with length at pitch if you lost fucking toss yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> that's what how's, the, how's that band not been for at least shortened or did it get shortened it was, it was nine months. Nine months. We appealed and that got wiped. I got still stuck with nine months. Never even got backdated. And then there were things happened after it, like, yeah, 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 Tori, you got done. Yeah. For taking slimming tablets, you got six months, three months of it backdated. And it's like, then you've got pre-seed. He hardly missed any fucking time. Genuinely trying to lose weight. Yeah. Surely he's 10 ounces his performance. Yeah. Whereas that's I got what, done for I mean, honest, that's what I thought you did. I thought you... Taking the slim tablets did again, look, though. Did, did I, I look like I ever took slim? Yeah. <laughs> didn't, you come, didn't you come back slim from somewhere? I'm sure I remember you going from being cuddly to slim. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cuddly, <Godly. laughs> big, big bones. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but I, I were always saying I was playing at 15 stone, so I won't like or any light or anything. I were always saying where. He must have just had a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> but like, just to go on that, right? Back in the day, you weren't allowed to have lem sips. 
Yeah, nothing. I remember. Nothing, yeah. Because there was something in Lemsip that came up on... It was a bad tent. substance. Yeah. Obviously, if you have... It's a masking thing, is it? I don't know what it were, but you can't... If you had two Lemsips, I don't think you're going to play much better, are you? It, like day nurse and night nurse, you couldn't have neither of them. Nah. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's, so no, summit in Lemsip, fuck as me. fucking daft as it is, yeah. that you can't have. So even off that initial phone call when you were in Egypt, did you not think, oh, sh-, like there were no point when you thought, oh shit, I had them, them chesties. No, because all that was going around in my head is drug, it's drugs, cocaine, or fucking yeah. all that shit. I'm, yeah. I didn't think nothing. So when did it, when did that moment hit that, oh shit, that's it? When FA come to the ground and interviewed me about it and I knew they were... They were, couldn't understand serious, why I'd yeah. not put anything down. They were proper being serious. I'm like, oh shit. Do you reckon that's what's done you? The fact that you haven't put it down? No, it down. I don't know. I don't, I don't know because I ain't got a clue. I always, I say it in my book, I say, I always go back. I'm sure I got stitched up because all the Tevez stuff happened years before and Sheffield United sued FA, didn't they? And uh, um, I always think that so they got me back a little bit. I feel like that, that 100%, yeah. yeah. That just because nine months, nine months for negligence, well, gross negligence, whatever you want to call it, is a long time. What, what did Rio get for, done? Yeah, na- he got nine months for missing one. Yeah, up now the fence. But apparently, apparently. That, they changed it all then because of that happened. They had to go stronger on everyone. Do you think you were made an example of? Possibly, yeah. What did you do in that time? But didn't Chef United offer you a new deal? Yeah, so they cut me wages. So this is what I mean. They stood by me. They were brilliant. Uh, they did turn around and say, listen, you're an asset to us. We've got to sit by you. You're worth money to us. We're going to they cut my wages in half and give... So my, sick, my contract's have been up at the end of that season after my ban. So they said, we'll cut your wages in half. We'll uh, give you another year so that when you come back, you've still got a year left. Uh, but we'll verbally agree that if you come back fit, we'll put your wages back up, which... Didn't happen. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got fucked off by that <laughs> My impression of it was they gave you a contract knowing that Neil's going to sign you at QPR. Not my perception of it. Were he, were he, he were at QPR then. Oh, was he not? No. Right. He were at QPR at some point that season. Yeah. But he were, obviously, when I first got back. the contract agreement was before that. Yeah, yeah. And basically, they said I were an asset and they need to protect their asset. And as long so as I come enough. back fit, then... So they're doing all right for they doing all right for you, but for themselves as well. Then, yeah, didn't they? worked both ways, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Because there was a few people said, "Why did you leave when we stuck by you?" Yeah, because this is this is another one and all. Obviously, that's why I've done what I'm doing with the yeah. book because there's a lot of Chef U fans. I went back a few a uh, few months after I'd left, and I'd not even stepped my foot out. Fucking taxi again, dropped off at game, and I was this fuck off back to QPI, and, I, and I'm like, wow. And basically, my side of the story is we. They basically got the offer. I had, they had offers from Ipswich, Bristol City, and QPR because they put. When I got banned and they gave me the new deal, they put a seven hundred fifty thousand pound buyout clause in, which I didn't understand anyway. Uh, so, so obviously, as soon as that were activated, I could speak to anybody. Uh, and these three clubs activated the the buyout clause, and I just went, I don't want to leave. And they went, We don't want you. You, you can go. We've got Steve Simmons coming on a free on less wages, premiership experience, and you've been banned for nine months, so we think we're getting a better deal. And I went, if I'm not what, then I'll go. So they flipped it on their head then? Yeah. They flipped it on their head. But that story never come out, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That never come out, that. It were, oh, I left for money, which obviously I, I did get better money to go to QPR, but when you're down in London and you try to live in London and travelling all the time, but time you extra you've got, it fucking evens yeah. itself out, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Does that hurt a bit, hearing them comments? After eight years uh, service to Sheffield United and, you know, being familiar with the staff and everybody around and then to know that it's not been put out there correctly and then to hear them comments and think, fucking hell, I've been stabbed in the back here. Yeah, because I've had eight amazing years there, do you know what I mean? And then to think, all of a sudden, these fans that love me all of a sudden fucking hated me and I'm like, well, I don't know what wrong. No I've, fault yeah. you're I've been told that I'm not watered and that to leave, basically. Uh, that's the club. That's the club. On the flip side, of that, that's the club protecting themselves, letting a club legend go. Yeah, it's the so, club that's the, it's the club that's manufactured it. Mm. And for manufactured all these, the move and manufactured the the media out. out they've been clever, aren't they? Mm. I still can't believe you but, came back fit after nine months and got another fucking contract. <laughs> I, well, to be fair, I would just I didn't fuck all else to do. All I did was play golf and go 
train every day. Were you allowed oh, to train? How did you do it? No, I weren't allowed to go to training ground. I weren't allowed to go to a match. Right. I could go six weeks before my band were about to finish and start right. training again. So I weren't even allowed to, around the club, which were crazy. Straight Saturday time. afternoons. That was the worst one. Saturday order. afternoons. Yeah. Restraining order. Believe it or not, I beat Jim. On running machine on bike. I don't fucking oh, no, it. but I had to do something to just... I used to put my earphones in and fucking just... For yeah. a bit of a chest work. infection. Yeah. It's not only fucking Lance Armstrong, is it? I know. Restraining order from club. Oh. That's, that's another one. I'm pissed off again, lads. <laughs> is that your See, it were tough to take, do you know what I mean? Now, if I'd fucking done something and I could roll my hands up and say, yeah, I fucked up. And what age were you, year, pad? 27, 28? What, uh, no, 32. 30, 32. 32 was about 10 years ago, 11 yeah. years ago, yeah. About 31, 32, yeah. So, if you sort of started I remember to... You could, but for a goalkeeper, that's not probably old, about, old, is it? Probably about, well, I always said, I felt like that all the time I was in my prime around 30, yeah. 32, 33. Yeah. Nine months. But an integral part of your career, really. But that, when, when it all... Prime, yeah, yeah, and when it all come out, though, it doesn't say... Paddy Kenny done for negligence, banned for nine months. It says Paddy Kenny drugs cheat. Yeah. People yeah. see that and you're a social yeah. drug addict. Do you know what I mean? You I bet it. you still get that now. I do, every time, all the time. My people that ask me, oh, I thought you were off your tits. Uh, even to this day, no one, people don't know it with negligence. Not, I didn't get done for cheating. Yeah. I still can't believe they've given you nine months for flipping. Long time. Best full full season. So, do you know if you got caught with cocaine, then what would you get for that? Must have gone up. I now. think it's like two years now, Must straight out. I think so. I might be wrong. I'm sure it is. Must have gone up. But so much, you know, like when they watch have a piss, so much stuff they fucking did. They showed me all these things. Like, they have to, you know, why they have to watch have a piss because they've caught people before with like a bag That's on right. them with a fake cock still. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the screen, they, they were showing me stuff, and I'm like, I'll be asking for a bigger what? one. <laughs> I've taken fucking six chesties tablets here, mate. <laughs> Imagine just pulling that Wayne Allison's car. <laughs> yeah. You got 50 pence, please, mate. <laughs> Stop this, it's leaking. <laughs> if you've got 10 bob here, I'll yeah. come down here, I'll be pissing for fucking England. We've got 50p for Well, they only want you to piss so much. You start yeah. filling up too much, they fucking... That's it. Like you it, spend it? ages waiting wait to piss. And then, have you ever had the one where it's the wrong colour? Or you're too... Oh, yeah. you've got to redo I'm it. Not, I'm not, I'm not bad. I, you've got to do it again. It's happened. I know a few that have had it, but I've never done it. It's the worst thing when you've got a night out, right? And you've got an away game, and the people who've been drug tested, they've, they've fed drunk too much water. Yeah. So it's, there's not enough strength in the piss. So you've got to wait for them to have another piss when it is strong enough. Christmas do's, they always turn up Christmas oh, do weekend. Yeah. You have to turn up on the fucking Monday, <laughs> <or Tuesday. laughs> I used to look, I used to like think though, I used to say that, because when it got a bit more serious, you weren't allowed a pint after, you know, like back in the day we were at Players Lounge. But I was just to take them into Players Lounge and say, look, I need a couple of pints. Oh couple yeah, pints one, one time at QPR, I've had about six bottles of Budweiser and we had to drive back from London to Sheffield. And you know what it's like? I, I must have stopped at every fucking junction for a piss. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck all the way up M1 pissing for fun. But the gaffer's like, shouldn't we have in? Well, I, I need to piss. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. oh, we're going to be here for a, a while. So there were a few clubs in, like you said, but were there only one winner? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think as soon as I knew we were interested, they were yeah. a no brainer for me. Would he ring you up? It could have been out of Mongolia in this time. <laughs> <but yeah. laughs> Would he ring you up? Or was it through agents and that? Or? Yeah, it was through agents and that. And then once I'd give him heads up that I wanted to come, he was, he'd, I'd, he'd get in touch then. And, and then, Paddy, get <laughs> down here. How are you, my old friend? Well, he rung, so he rings me up and he says, uh, Right, uh, come down and do your. Uh, he said, I'm away this week. He says, uh, Come down week after on Monday. He says, I'll be back. So I want to be there when you sign. He says, Do your medical and sign. I've gone, Gaffer says on Thursday, I'm going to fucking Magaluf on a bender for the weekend. Don't come back till Monday. So I have to do Tuesday. He went, fuck that, come down tomorrow. <laughs> 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 so I got down there, I think he do it full medical and everything. And Nigel Cox, with physio, we'd been at Sheffield United. Coxie with Tash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Coxie. And we actually didn't like, but took him to Crystal Palace and QPR, yeah. even though he didn't like him. He was as like, a physio? Yeah, or, yeah, or physio. as a bloke? No, physio. Well, as a bloke, I think. It's a so, one. And he, 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 I goes in and we, we, he got, the cox has gone there, get on scales. So I broke them. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he went, can you touch your toes? It's a cunt. <laughs> he says, can you touch your toes? He went, you've passed your medical. I went, what? He went, 
Gaffer said, just pretend you fucking don't want you. We're going to pass it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to sit around for two hours, pretend they'd been for scans on my knees. <laughs> he says, if anyone upstairs asks you when you're signing, you've been to hospital and had a scan, everything's all clear. Fuck. Fair <laughs> play. Gaffer's told me to tell you, you passed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak to anyone else? Or as soon as you got that phone call, that were it? Uh, yeah, I spoke to Well, I didn't speak to my agent, spoke to him. I got offered more money at Bristol City than... A lot more than I did at QPR. But just with Warnock, I thought, now nah, I've got to go with him. Do you think it were a, a comfort thing as well from being banned that you go into something that you so, know? Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. Someone over know, knows what I can do. and Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Not going into a completely new environment. Mm -hmm. I'd, yeah. I'd only played two games that season, you see. Last two games at season, so it's a long time. It's not a lot of games in one yeah. season. Yeah. Were you not faced by bright lights? Or London? So I, I don't, I, I don't think I could have moved to London. I didn't live in London. I lived in like Redbourne, which is near St Albans. Right. Seventeen minutes on a train, so it were perfect into London. Seventeen minutes into London, get pissed. Seventeen minutes back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I four it. cans, four cans, four cans on train there in seventeen minutes. Four up way back, it was perfect. <laughs> but going back to how, how did you get on with the lads at QPR? Because like, like you said, there's some. Big characters, different characters. Yeah, I thought there was lads like me though. You know? No, they weren't there. Yeah, at that, first, was right? that was after. That was it. Yeah, uh, Sean Derris, Clint hey, Hurls, yeah. Ida Elgerson. We're all similar sort of characters. I thought, and we've genuine lads that we might have been not the greatest, but when you put when you battle in, put them in a team yeah. together, that ends up being a good solid side. Yeah. Goes back to Warnock type. Yeah, exactly. Lad and player, innit? Yeah, yeah. I, still, I remember thinking that I knew you had a strong team, but I would never have thought you'd win the league. No, because at that point, Warner, I know he got got Chef you up, but I didn't realise how good he was back then. But we, we we went in and it were like literally fucking twenty games before we lost, and all of a sudden it's just a you just yeah, roll, a roll and, yeah. you just and then after that you can afford to win and lose every other week. Do you know what I mean? It, and it were that it was just you couldn't believe how we'd started. To be fair. But he did bring in a few players later on, like we say, that didn't seem like Warnock players. Like, well, Tarab was there. Yeah, Tarab yeah, would have been there anyway, would he? Yeah. He'd, he'd been on loan from Tottenham, but they signed him that season. So did he sign he him? He signed that season, yeah. Did he not sign Chimbonda? I can't well. remember. I'm sure he was did. That did, not he, did he come no, in back end? No, did he come in back end of that season? He wouldn't have I come thought he'd come at the back end because he, did he, he Mark Hughes didn't bring him in. He was all right, Pascal. I didn't mind him. I got on all right with him. Funny shape, cock, any? Oh, remember. yeah. Right big, corner. Big and long. Yeah. <laughs> right Bit of a corner. curve on it. Yeah. That season started, and I'll never forget, you know what fixtures come out? And obviously, I've left Sheffield United. Warnock's left. Blackwell's manager of Sheffield United. Fixtures come out at nine o'clock. Warnock rings me up at eight. Obviously, club find out an hour before. You won't fucking believe it. He went, keep it quiet, though. He went, we've only got Sheffield United away. First, first away game at season. Like fucking hell. <laughs> so it goes back. To, I'm going back to Bramall Lane as a, I got absolutely fucking pelters. Yeah, during and the I game. I mean, so it was second game of the season. We beat Donny first game four 0 Come to Bramall Lane. Moggs Moggs had been told to if you went toss spin him round, stick him at court first half. Yeah. Spun me around. Went. And I got absolutely caned. Called a greedy cunt, fat bastard, everything. And it, it hurt because I thought you don't know fucking truth. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Fans that had absolutely loved me for fucking eight yeah. years all of a sudden fucking battering me and it were hurt. And we, we were 3-0 up after 20 minutes and I didn't celebrate one goal and I was just like, fucking hell, Still getting horrible. stick. So, yeah. Did you just want the final whistle to go oh, and get yeah, out Oh yeah, I couldn't wait, yeah. And then game finish and I, I remember coming home and we won 3-0 and fucking Blackwell got sacked after the game. Warnock rung me up and we literally got on A57 coming off M1 and my phone goes, Neil Warnock, I thought, eh? Told him I was going home. He must know I'm not waiting for coach. And he's like, he's been fucking. He was laughing. He didn't get on with Blackwell at this point. <laughs> he's going. He's been fucking sacked. <laughs> he's laughing now. <laughs> he's been. And I'm like, second game of the season. How's he been sacked? Why did he fall out then? Because he fucked off to Leeds, didn't he? And I think he didn't tell him, and he found out through press. And that's why he fell out. So him. if he'd have found out, if he'd have phoned Warnock, Blackwell had phoned Warnock and said, her, "Right, you? I've got this opportunity." Yeah. It'd have been all right with that. You'd you have thought so, wouldn't you? Mm. Listen, I've got a chance to go to Leeds, Premier League, surely probably a massive wage rise, mm. whatever. You couldn't fault him, could you? Yeah. But I think it was the way he found out. Yeah. So, yeah, so he was buzzing that he, he was laughing his cock off. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Someone mentioned, uh, was, it, was there a, a bit of a tunnel battle at Chelsea? Mm. I think we're, uh, we're, did we beat, yeah, we beat them 1 0 at Loftus Road. And you were all that time when all that racism stuff happened with John Terry and Anton Ferdinand. Yeah. So there were a lot of stuff going off on pitch to do with that. And they didn't like it that we beat them. They had two men sent off, they had nine men. And they fucking lost a fucking little QPR, do you know what I mean? And they were raging, there were all sorts of shit going off. And uh, I remember going up tunnel at the end of the game and I chucked a left in and then I heard all this commotion going off in tunnel. So I fucking run back, I'm stood like up over everyone, looking down and Ivanovic had got two of our players in headlocks and I looked and I thought, two, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked off, I fucked off back into Jesse. Well, he's a fucking monster, yes. I'm not getting involved with him. He just looks hard, doesn't he? Yeah, I thought, I'd have just fucked off back into Jesse and left him to it. <laughs> I was trying to think which one of the Chelsea players would have been game for a scrap and I, he yeah, didn't come into yeah, my head yeah. but I bet you he was yeah obviously people like Drogba got sent off so you'd, you'd expect him to he were a big fucker one of you I don't think he's a scrapper though did he yeah. as I well as I know he, him as well. <laughs> <laughs> John Terry he'd have been up for yeah. it wouldn't he do you know that so was that the flip game the reverse game from when because it was at Loftus Road that there was hell on with the racism thing, wasn't it? That was the game. The also, that was the that oh, was the right. game, yeah. Oh, so it happened during the that actual game, day. Yeah, so obviously there was a lot of tension in that mm. game. They'd had two sent off. So was, was we were beating them one Was it game. at your end? Or was it no, with the other end, apparently. I didn't even know what went off, to be fair. Yeah. Fucking okay. hell. Yeah, talk us about to rap then, like, because who spoke about him recently? Birchie, wasn't it? Yeah. About him, Matt, Matt Birchie had been... Because we had him on last week, didn't we? Yeah. He was, when he wanted to be, he was fucking... Everyone asked me what best player played with him, and I was saying, when he was at it, he was fucking unplayable. He was fucking... But, but he was one of them, he'd just not turn up for training, or he'd just fuck off to France or Morocco, not, not come in for three or four days. Just do what he wanted. That's why one at one time, he had to get all senior lads with me, Sean Derrick, going back to them, like Clint Earl, and just said, you've got to bite your bullet with him. Don't fucking kick off. He'll get us promoted. And we just had to fucking buy it and just go with it. And he did. Must have been hard for you. He's hard. You want to fucking kill him. He yeah. Must have been hard for Warnock as well. From what we what you've seen about him and getting good lads on his mm. side and whatever. <clears throat> but just with it, like I think one time we played Scunthorpe away and we just started to lose a few when we'd lost the first game, then we were playing Scunny away and they were bottom of the league. And uh, he refused to play, he said their ground shit, I'm not playing at Scunthorpe. So he went, I want to go back home. Right. So he fucked off back home. We played Scunner. Uh, and we got beat 4-1 we were top they were bottom we got smashed could have been fucking 8-1 at end up and uh, not saying that I played well we <laughs> 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 just missed loads of chances uh, and you play well it could have been 2-1 we really <laughs> and uh, then we, we were staying up because we were playing Barnsley on Tuesday and Warwick rung him up and just said you better come back I need you to play he went okay I will do and he went right I'll see you get back. can you get back for Monday for training he went no I'll come back Tuesday he just fucking turned up Tuesday he touched ball once in first minute, scored, fucking absolute, beat about four men, killed it in top bin. Didn't touch ball again, won one nil. And that's what he used to do. I don't know. QPR's cancer now. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you hear yeah. about Ferguson, but I can't see can't, I, I can't see Ferguson accepting Cantona saying I'm going on for four days. No. No. And I'm But that's I'm levels so- as well, isn't it? That's why not knowing that he's too good for this level. Yeah. So he I've got to bite, you've got to bite your lip sometimes, yeah. haven't you? And it, and it worked, didn't it? It did work. It got you promoted. Obviously, if we wouldn't have got promoted and it'd have fucking cost us, lads would have wanted to fucking kill him, wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? If we weren't winning, because we were winning, it were all and right. Yeah. Smashed, so like it? that season, because we were winning all the time, we didn't train one Monday unless we had a game on the Tuesday. So it were literally, Saturday, uh, play Saturday, it was Sunday, Monday off, in Tuesday, off Wednesday, in Thursday, Friday, game again, and it just keep repeating like because we kept winning. And he'd say to me, there's no point you coming down for training on Tuesdays. He'd just come down. And I'd, I wouldn't come until Thursday. I'd get fucking oh. came back, lads. <laughs> fucking all the boys back. All the boys back. Oh, you can tell it's Thursday he's fucking turned in. Paddy, Paddy Warlock's back in. <laughs> but like, we go back to his man management that season and all. So we start season, I think we run four on trot without conceding. And then we played Derby away and we were 2-0 down and we scored two in injury time, drew two all. And it was international break and we were meant to be off Sunday, Monday. In Tuesday, Wednesday, no, off sun, Sunday, Monday, in Tuesday, Wednesday, off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, back in Monday afternoon. And he's that excited because we'd won four and drawn one and only conceded two goals. He went, fuck that, I'll see you as a week on Monday. 
So let's, like, not even a month into the season, he's given us a fucking more than a week off. I'm in Dubai for fucking six, seven days. <laughs> we come back in on the Monday and he's literally gone to the lads, right, we've got six games before next in the national break. Get me three wins, you can have another week off. And we won Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. And we fucking got another week off. It was fucking mental. That's why you, That's so why it, it does so well, man. I'm telling you. And people yeah. say you've got Give to go in training day or you've nah. got no days off. Yeah. Dangle you know, a carrot like yeah. that. Yeah. The best carrots, them aren't yeah. they? Oh, they were brilliant! They are the Win best. Win me three carrot. games out at next six, you can have a week off, and we'd won them all in a week. <laughs> the incentive. Do you know when you when you think, why is he so successful? That's the reasons I think. Pre-season, we went to Italy, right, and we were, we were in this, and there were like ten new signings, and we were, he got us all in. This, he'd been there a couple. He brought Sharon with him and kids and all this. <laughs> 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 so he'd been there a few days before and he turned up and he uh, we turned up and he's gone like listen lads I'm just going to put this out there every day around here he's like a Saturday night he says we're here for uh, 10 days we've got three matches he went if I give you a curfew you're going to break it he says no fucking doubt he says no, I don't want to fall out with no one he says so I'm telling you now apart from the three days we've got games the nights before you stay in the other seven go get as pissed as you want as long as you get up for training and everyone were like what the fuck how good is that but we had two nights out after games, and that's all lads wanted. And he got everyone on sideline. Yeah, right? yeah. He went in, didn't he? Went straight away. And we didn't go lads. out till like ten o'clock at night, and we're back in at two. So it wasn't like we were yeah. smashing it. Fuck. You're just clever. You were just clever with stuff like that. So he has, he's half psychologically, yeah, like astute, isn't he? Do you think there's young, young managers out there that would get get the first job and take his Ideas. Man, nowadays. Can't, can't see it, can you? Can't see it nowadays. They'll be getting yeah. the textbooks from... <laughs> it is, isn't it? File of facts of yeah. what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Yeah. No or, days off. Yeah. That's warm yeah. downs. Cool warm bollocks. downs, cool downs, all that shit. But, do you take a similar approach if, if you were managing? That's all I know, so yeah. <laughs> You'd have to. Try to get on the side, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Goes a long way. You've been in, I've been in dressing rooms where lads don't like manager, and it's fucking horrible. But then there's there's lads from your generation that are in management <clears> now <throat> that are going by the book. So that's what that's why that's what I said. That's what I meant. That that's why they get one job and get fucked, fucked. up and never get another. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. The thing is, all all it needs is one or two to turn against the manager because yeah. that'll spread. They'll sit in corners. They'll yeah. flip and backstab. <sighs> Drop just a few bombs out yeah. there, though. That's all they do. Throw them out there. Yeah. Mm. What were the lads like that weren't in the team that weren't playing with him? I think everyone were fine because we were winning. Do you mean when I were at QPR or in general? Just in general. Obviously, there were different. I think everyone were different. I think like Dean Wynn last one fell out from Jeff Horsfield. But then you get some that were fine. Would it just be the lads that played that get Sunday Monday off? Or would he? Would he no, say it? everyone that were involved. So the lads yeah. haven't come on. Yeah, they'd do an extra fucking bit of running yeah. after, oh, and you'd run all, you'd run for an half an hour, oh, wouldn't you? To I'd have take that. Weekend off all day. Come in with a sweater, wouldn't you? From the extra running, we uh, Sunday Monday off. Yeah, mm. all day. Mm. Do you get on with you about them? Yeah, I did. I got on with you. Yeah. Crazy yeah. as fuck on pitch, like, but he was a good player. Uh, but yeah, I seemed to get on with him. It was a, obviously. Uh, momentous moment, iconic moment in that that Aguero moment, being yeah, part yeah. of it when he got sent off. Yeah. Fucking hell, I couldn't believe it. We got two, one all, fighting us fucking nuts off. Didn't I don't think we kicked ball more than fucking five minutes in the whole fucking first half. And uh, somehow we'd just come back. We were losing one at half time. Managed to get a goal from nowhere. You think fucking, I'm have a little chance here because they were under pressure on then. Yeah. Massively, uh, and then he got sent off. He was like, oh fuck! But then we went two one up straight after. It was like, Mackie back, pro- Mackie back stick, weren't it? Yeah, but I didn't proper and see what went off with him. Did you know that we were gonna t- like? No, I didn't. Obviously, we're obviously off the ball. He tried happened. to take somebody with him, wasn't it? They were off the ball. What happened? And then he, I didn't properly see what was going off until obviously after seeing it on TV. We were like, fuck. Yeah. Crazy. That was huge thing. then, wasn't it? Yeah. How was he? I did. He walked past you. Chain, uh, training ground and just put his head down not even acknowledge you didn't like the way he worked he was another one team at last minute suits to away games as well he used to make you wear suits right? so you'd like come down for fucking to tell your team at video at hotel you'd have to sit in your suits before you're about to set off everyone's sweating the fucking bollocks off 
couldn't got to change changing uh, to the ground. Everyone couldn't wait to get undressed, and then after game, it'd make you put your suit back on till you got on bus, and then you could put your tracksuit back on at bus, and it was like, what the fuck? The lads could with the fucking ties flying everywhere. I wonder what, what, was what that mentality is. It's like a school. It's like you just want to, you look the park, yeah. coming, just walking from fucking coming out of ground to get on the coach you're fucking 20 yards initially were you excited though like like you said about Brian Robson being a Man United fan yeah before like, Mark to, yeah. Gibbs again United legend but then I'd gone I, my goalie coach though my dad who'd done because obviously I'd come back from nine months out and I'd worked with well I won't train him that much but <laughs> <laughs> a lot of days off. but my goalie coach Dave Rouse who I really enjoyed working with me were a good coach and then when you was coming he brought in Kevin Hitchcock and all of a sudden my training changed and I was like 35 and he's trying to change me at 35 and I'm like, fuck off it, you. I'm not changing my technique and stuff now. Yeah. I, I, if I were 18, 20, I can understand it. Did you speak to him about that? Yeah, I used to tell him all the time. He used to want me to do, it were all when all this prehab shit was starting to come in. Paddy, I want you to do 45 minutes in gym before and lunges and stretches and I'd go out. I did it for the first, two, first day and I was trained like a cunt. And then I refused to do it after that. I just said, fuck, I'll do it after, I'm not doing it before, fuck yeah. off. Yeah. You know when you're a certain age and you're used to a certain yeah, way well, you, you train. You play you know for your body, don't 15 you? years and you know what you need and what yeah. you don't need, don't you? And he would try to change me at a fucking 35 year old and I wasn't having it. Would you say you enjoyed it down there? In 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 all? Yeah, two years out there, yeah. Pro- well, got, yeah, got promoted. It were all right first year because I were up in Sheffield more. My neighbours were like, have you got a fucking job? Fuck, <laughs> 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 okay, I thought you had a game. <laughs> but uh, second year become a bit harder because all of a sudden you're in Premier League and not winning all the time. You can't have as much time off. So I weren't getting home as much. Fetch some hitting in an all QPR back then, didn't they? Yeah, fucking hell. Cissé, Tribule Cissé, he come in. He was a fucking good lad. He's the one that didn't, uh, didn't pl- want to play because he didn't have sex. Oh, is that what? <laughs> Did you not know that? No, I didn't know <laughs> He must, have, he must have had a lot of sex then towards back in that season. <laughs> he, do you know what? Every game he played, what, last six or seven games he played for us at QPR, he either scored or got sent off. He got sent off some like three times towards back yeah. in that season. <laughs> yeah, apparently that's the crack. He refused to play because he, he didn't have... He refused to play. I'd have had a nine-month ban. He wouldn't have been from, <laughs> he wouldn't have been from taking out. <laughs> Rose, up your game. <laughs> <laughs> Who's she? Because his missus... <laughs> <laughs> so in all the, I mean Mark, Mark Hughes the, the contrast you totally different again gone from Warnock at Sheffield United to Brian Robson Warnock at Mark you, Hughes at QC I just whether it was just me I, don't, I know well I know a lot of lads didn't like stuff that they all did anyway so it can't have just been me yeah. uh, just the way they were I don't know if it were a Man United thing whether Man United did all yeah. that I don't know and is that when all the signs started happening the random yeah random signings. when Mark Hughes come in it were Mark Hughes come in and within first week the, where his car used to park all their staff that we brought is to assistant and coaching and, and uh, goalie coach and where their spots were they dug a fucking hole put a pole in it put a plaque up Mark Hughes and said Mark Hughes manager OBE well we fucking lost something like first eight that he come in or didn't win it first eight and someone at lads had wrote under OBE out before Easter <laughs> They were fucking raging. <laughs> but no one had me do them, it? No one had... Still not know. No. It's in the book, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You've got to buy the book to find out. <laughs> fucking, I'm Jim Bonder when he was at Sunderland parked in Roy Keane's parking space to get out. Wow. Good, that's good crap. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get out, that's good yeah. crap. If you want to fight, I bet you want to fight him today. <laughs> So what, did you brought Rob Green in and did you ever fall out with were you from that point? Not use obviously uh, I remember uh, uh, coming to end of that season we, and they basically said to me basically said to me agent we, we want to bring bigger and better players in which I, 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 I got I worked stupid and uh, they said once we get someone in you can go uh, and obviously I'd sort of like Leeds move up at this point and that's sort of Start getting myself sorted. Warnock, believe it or not, Warnock wants to sign for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking believe it. Honestly, I'm not lying. <laughs> I 
all the, of all the, of, honestly, of all the jobs that Warnock got, it was fucking 20 minutes from your house. Unbelievable. Yeah, oh, back up, back up. Oh, I couldn't believe it. He uh, must have rang you when he got sacked. He went, don't worry. Don't worry, pan. Wherever but, I'm going, but, you're coming with me. Then Rob Green come in and then basically within a day, they said, you can go. But I was taking a massive wage cut to go to Leeds. So they said I could leave and I had a year left. And I nearly didn't go to Leeds because I was like, well, you've got to meet me halfway on what I'm losing yeah. out on because you want me out. And they were fuck. I'll never forget uh, Chief Exec at the time, Mike Rigg, or in Marbella, rings me up. Fucking like you've been to Marbella more times. <laughs> fucking hell. Time <laughs> show. Sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, I said, listen, you've got to meet me halfway on what I'm losing out on. I'm like, you can fuck off. And he rung me up and just said, listen, if you don't go, I'll make you train seven days a week, three times a day with kids. And I'm like, are you fucking for real? I've come here. I've got I've got player at here, support player here. Uh, and players play you on my first season fucking record clean sheets for club I says I've got you promoted help I've got you promoted played a massive part in keeping you up towards end I says and you just fucking treat me like this and he was like it's up to you and he put phone down on me so then I rung him back and I just said listen I'll tell you what I'll, we're back in two weeks I'll see you in training ground I'm going to knock you the fuck out I said, and I'll get sacked, and then I'll still sign for Leeds anyway, because I'm getting fuck all out, you know, <laughs> as it stands. <laughs> so then Warner rings me up 10 minutes later, and uh, he's got, what have you fucking said? You fucked it up, moved off. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my own gaff a cow, a calf cut and all at this point. Been out all day, and he's gone, whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. He says, listen, I says, I says, I told him what Mike Rigg had said and what a bit he went, oh, you did fucking right. I'd have fucking said that to him as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next morning I woke up to an email. It must have worked because I got offered some money to go. It weren't what I wanted, but I just thought, fuck it, get out of there. It's not being trapped <laughs> like a cunt. So, so it's it, it seems like as soon as he realises the situation, oh, he just flips, doesn't he? He looks yeah. like that, innit? And all of a sudden he agrees. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, he off. Like, hey, Paddy, top man for sitting up with yourself. <laughs> you fucking cost us, Paddy. Get in them fucking showers. <laughs> Is that what it's like, though? We know when he, he gets sacked from QPR, are you thinking, where's he going to go next? Yeah. Where's he taking us to? Please go somewhere in Yorkshire. <laughs> get me back home. <laughs> Anywhere in Yorkshire, but Sheffield Wednesday, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did, did you get in trouble on Twitter? Like, did, did you call QPR Tim Pot and a bit of. Yeah, that was too. So, yeah. So, we're, first game of the season, we've, I, th I think we won, and QPR lost 4 or 5 0. And uh, I'd put some on Twitter about us winning. And then I got all these QPR fans. Well, I say all of them. It were only two or three. They'd been sla they were slagging my kids off on Twitter. And I, and I was fucking raging. I bit back and I put, fuck off, you've got a tin pot club. Fucking shit, I hope you get relegated and all this. Like, which I didn't mean for one minute. I was bit because they were slagging my fucking kids off at the end of the day. It was level, a, it, was levels in yeah, that. Yeah, it was just a reaction. And it was only recently that I've come out and apologised and said I never met, meant it for one minute. More time. But I also towards. rung Mike Rigg up because I'd had a few beers and all. And I rung him up and I just laughed out for him and put phone down <laughs> because of what how he'd been with me. I just thought, fuck you. And I just laughed what? out. Is this bit start of the season? First when? game at season. I just started <laughs> laughing down for him. What kind of laugh was that? Oh, <laughs> just I can't remember. I I'm sure everything. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I like it. <laughs> It's like, that's, that's, need Coslo, any... that's Coslo coming yeah, off yeah. on you, that. But he come out and said that I'd slag Rob Green off and. I'm not one of them people. I never, I never slag a fellow goalkeeper off anywhere. And he said, apparently, I come out and said, Rob Green, shit, he's had a fucking stinker. Not for a minute did I ever say that. I just laughed out for him. But he just wanted to get me back for... Yeah. Again, put it in the media yeah. that Paddy that's, said... That's good, that, though, mate. I like that. Yeah. Just like the last phone, yeah. <laughs> I, did it, I did it to Phil Brown, you know. And we got promoted with Stoke. So we got promoted the last game of the season over in the playoffs. And I borrowed uh, Richard Cresswell's brother-in-law's phone, phoned him up, and I just laughed. <laughs> Two weeks he was phoning this number, Phil Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Before they end up getting promoted in the playoff final. And fuck him. Did you ring off your own number? Yeah, of course I did. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'd like to think it come up. I'm, I'm a shit bag. I'd, like I'm a shit bag. <laughs> I'd like to think my name come up on his phone. And fucking... He knows where that laugh's coming yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so Leeds, was yeah. you was you happy? 
Get, getting back to the uh, getting back to the oh, old room. Yeah, back, you're back sucking up fucking tit, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's the right about it. You're back, you're back. Tea, back on tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, obviously I'm from Halifax and every, everyone, a lot of family members were Leeds fans. Massive club, so I was buzzing to to go there. And what, uh, who else of the old guard did he sign? Was that when Brownie, Tongue Brownie, R- Holsey, R- 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 Tongue R- Holes, R- yeah. Oh, it's a rare reunion. Oh, yeah, it were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're getting the band back together. I've seen that in the paper the, the other day. Warnock to, on about the Middlesbrough job, getting the boys back together, and it was you, <laughs> all the others, Malls. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what, you lasted till about April, uh, Warnock, and then, who, was it Ter- Brian McDermott? Brian McDermott come in, yeah. Again, you, strange bloke. Yeah. Was Very it? strange bloke, yeah. Who's best manager over the Neil Warner that you've worked under? Probably Neil Lennon. He, I didn't play. He came in at Bolton when I was there, but just loved his way of training and everything were it got to be spot on every day. But then when you stopped training, you could relax a bit and have a bit of banter, whereas Brian McDermott, he was just too serious 24-7. Couldn't, you couldn't let, let your guard down or out. You just couldn't deal with mm-hmm. players ever laughing around training ground. Couldn't handle that. I think I that's that. a little ball over at Reading. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's done well at Reading. He did, Got yeah. Reading promoted, didn't he? Yeah. I think he did, yeah. I think, do you think he was... Because the... Was the Italian came in at Leeds? Yeah. The, the old, he sacked him and then reappointed him yeah. again, didn't he? If he did was there. There, yeah. It always seemed from an outside perspective he was... McDermott was more of a... Because he wasn't the name that you'd associate with... New owners. A yes man. A yes man, exactly. Yeah. Well, the, he, but that, he brought that Hockaday. David Hockaday in, didn't he? Fucking yeah. hell. You forget how much of a shambles that club was. Honestly. Mm. We, do you know when he brought Hock- when he brought Hockaday and we come back that pre-season, uh, it was my, s- just finished my second year there, and he, and we've gone in for a meeting, and he's gone, right lads, uh, uh, there's no pool no more, they've emptied pool, there's no jacuzzi, sauna and steam room being turned off. Got rid of uh, washer, uh, washer women and chefs and that, so we have to start bringing your lunchbox in with some food for training. He went, oh, another thing and all that chairman walked by. He says he walked by trainer socks for training. So I've been thinking, right, is uh, why don't we all put 20 quid in each, which will get seven pairs of Macron socks for every 20 pound. He said, we'll just throw them in and then they're there for the season. And I'm sat there in this room shaking my head. And he went, problem, Paddy. And I was like, yeah, I play for Leeds United. And you want me to buy my own fucking trainer socks? <laughs> trainer. I went, it's not about the fucking 20 quid. I said, I can't get my fucking head round it. It's a shambles. It's like, what the fuck? You want me to bring my own fucking food in? Wow. Never seen a like it. This is I bet we're some, I bet we're some fucking pat lunch though, wouldn't you? Fucking hell. You were fucking <laughs> two Big Mac meals. <laughs> Big, Mac, Big Mac meal on my own. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> there were, I mean, there were the rumours that you weren't playing because. You buffed him with the 17th and that where he's unlucky number with that load of bullshit. No, I fell out of McDermott. I'd been playing injured for him for two months, only training once a week, damaged an artery in my me, in me right foot. And uh, you know what it's like if you're not training day in, day out, you lose your sharpness, don't you? Started letting a few goals in. That More I, for, I think for a keeper as well, yeah. you, you need to be sharp. Started letting a few goals in that I should have saved and you're like, fuck's sake. And then we're playing uh, Yeovil away and obviously up, kicking uphill, winds were down, Ron Teller, and fucking Jimmy Kevin, knowing I can't kick, has fucking done a back pass from inside at own half to me. And I'd like to kick it out of play. Ron Telly, it looked like fucking dog and duck, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I goes in at half time, I fucking battered him. And this is where you sort of start to see dressing rooms changing. You're like, normally if someone had battered me, I'd have fucking jumped up and had a right go back. He like start going down in his chair, like fucking sliding down it. So I thought, I better calm down here. <laughs> and then McDermott pulled me after a couple of days later and says you'll never play for me again you don't speak to players like I in dressing room I'm like what he says no one wins games or gets promoted by arguing in dressing room I'm like fuck off I says I'm not having it for one minute and no. that were me done then at Leeds you just lead by mutual consent in the end no that were another ten another one another one <laughs> chance, to go, chance to go to Doncaster on half my money again like big wage cut again meet me halfway now, go for now or you don't. So I says, no, I thought, I thought, fuck it, this time I'm staying. It's only fucking, now we're up road, 45 minutes up road from I'm digging my heels in this time. And then they were treating me like a twat, uh, making me train on my own, all stuff like that, which I think's illegal. 
Yeah. Stuff and all that well, one. You train your own. I did train your own. Well, I used to just go in and just fucking sit on bike. For, I had a letter sent by Chilino saying you will come in uh, six days a week uh, for a minimum of three hours. So I'd go in and do like match days on a Saturday and on a Wednesday when no one were in. Just sit on bike for fucking five minutes and just sit in the gym watching fucking my laptop or whatever, my iPad, whatever <laughs> I brought with me, watching mood. Who was manager at this point then? Still Matt Dermot? No, Hockaday. David Hockaday. Hey, he's obviously just a puppet then. Yeah. Well, it's just stuff like, they told me then this certain day you can have a day off and then ring me up at nine o'clock that night and go, actually change your plans. You're going to Northern Ireland under 21s tomorrow, be at Manchester Airport, so and so time. So I got all the way over to Northern Ireland and then uh, Junior Lewis were his assistant, come up to my room and said, oh, I've spoke to Gaffer, you don't even have to play today if you don't want. I'm like, you can fuck off, you brought me here, I'm fucking playing. You know, just things like that. That's poor, isn't it? Mm. And you're what, 34, 35, 35 here? 36, yeah. Just like, yeah, I don't need this. We played a game and obviously all the young lads went to bed and I've fucking gone to a bar. Peroni with fucking iced glass out of freeze. I'm like, ooh, I'll have a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Junior Lewis has come up to me, tapped me on the shoulders with Paddy no drinking. I've gone, what? He went, Paddy no drinking. I went, Junior, fuck off. I'm 35 year old, I'll do what I want. And he fucking went and sat behind me. All the, and I, ended, I only wanted a couple. I ended up having about eight or nine because I thought, fuck you, we could sit there all the time. Sure I sent him a coffee over every other fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> in case he fell asleep. I didn't want to fall asleep. He's still going to watch this. He's still, still not going to sleep at all. Sat, still sat there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So by the end, did you, did you just want to get away? Yeah, so probably about four weeks after being treated like I couldn't have said they were, I could have gone to Donna, so they could have got me off wage bill and all that shit. They uh, offered me fucking 70% to go, and it was like, well, wow. I just left after that then. You must have been happy with that then. Oh, yeah, I were, but I didn't have a club. All of a sudden, you're ah, six right. weeks into the season, everyone's got the fucking squads. His old man's not got a job. The old That's man's the worst not got thing. a job. Fucking hell. So, at that point in your career, where are you? Because obviously, you went to a few, few quite clubs. a few clubs. Never then, played. Just never playing. I just thought that were, that sort of petered out after that, yeah. yeah. We are thinking about chucking it then. At, you just got 70% from Leeds at 35, 36. Do you think, fuck it then? No, I want to carry on. You know, one of them. I was just, People I spoke to retired are like, play as long as you can. And, you think, and I just thought, no, I want to carry on. And then, I, like I said, I had a chance to go to Bolton. Stayed there for a bit, then went to Ipswich. And then Rotherham. Well, Bolton. Oh. <laughs> Come then calling Rotherham. again. Come calling again. <laughs> I have never played you. And, uh, well, I knew what I would knocking on a bit then I'd not played for a few se- few seasons now did he just ring you up I were out running on a Friday yet yeah, again you know, no. you know, honestly Bad I'm not lying I swear to you his listeners have got to run to fucking believe it <laughs> it's a Friday night he's got his first game on Saturday and I'm out running he rung me and he, he always called me son you alright son hey up gaffer and it was that one again are you fit I went, I'm Paddy Fit. He went, you'll do for me, son. I'll see you at training on Monday. <laughs> That's all I said. Put phone down. <laughs> you just turn up. Yeah. <laughs> he's a fucking legend, isn't he? <laughs> I, f- I think he's incredible, mate. <laughs> Love to get him on here. Yeah. <laughs> Love to yeah. get him on here. But did you never <laughs> think he might take you as a goalkeeper coach or out anywhere? No, I, to be fair, I spoke to him about it because when I went into Northampton doing goalkeeping coach there, I didn't enjoy it. I just didn't get that buzz. It was when I was a player. Oh, so you weren't bothered about No, and then obviously when I left Northampton, I spoke to him a few times over the phone and he knew I'd set my own business up and I didn't want to be in football. I loved having weekends to myself now. And I just said, I don't want to be it. And so it's never even been mentioned. So uh, it's more a personal cho- choice yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. How were you when you first fell out the game, playing-wise? I found it tough, yeah. I think first seven months, fucking... All I used to do was... Take the dog for a walk and go get pissed. What did you? It was hard, yeah. It was hard. Have you got a new missus? Do you have a new missus at this time? Yeah, but then as after my football finished, that's we got married, and then that's within twelve months that were over. Fuck me. So another I went through statistic. another divorce, yeah. So it was another tough, another tough thing that went on in my life. So obviously finished you football. That that contributing happened. factors for finishing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, there is a statistic about it being. How many people yeah. end up getting divorced? Yeah, it's when really high, isn't it? When they come out of the game, like, do you think that's just the, the players' attitude that they go the other way and they fucking like? So you hit, you turn to the drink, <clears> you, or is it? It the could be a bit of both. It could be a bit of both. 
couldn't it? Yeah. A bit of factor. Because it does. You, I think players get lost. Yeah. Is that how I you felt? Lost do. in life. Yeah, so, lost in life. So after being at Northampton, that's when that was me done with football. I made that decision. People were like, what the fuck do I do now? And like I said, for seven months, I didn't do it apart from play golf, get pissed and take dog out. And then I ended up, a mate of mine gave me a job just basically to get me out of the house, get me up in the morning, purpose to fucking live life. Yeah. And it, to be fair to him, I don't speak to him now, it, it did me a massive favour, which then off back of that, I set up my own business and... and you're in a good place now? I, oh, Matt, yeah, I love... I, I know where I stand every other weekend, I've got myself time to myself every other week over week after that I've got my girls and then in the week I'm busy doing me me, me work my transporting work so good place so you think if you you think if your pal had not offered you that job to get you out of the house do you think you might have ended up spiralling possibly yeah because I want I love to be here I were a I could be a nightmare when I was pissed and all uh, and I was drinking nearly every day a week were you drinking because... I fuck all else to do. Yeah, basically, just, just yeah. to be in Bored. people's company. Yeah, because you know it's like, I used to be in dressing room every day, well, nearly every day at week, having banter, <laughs> but, and all of a but sudden... Well, I used to be in dressing room fucking Thursday and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to go down to the pub every Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I were all right, we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found writing the book? Therapeutic? In terms of reliving it all, I yeah, like. it's been good. It's made me realise that what I've achieved because you yeah. don't. I don't think you take it on board when you're in the middle of it mm. all. And to say I didn't come into football till I was twenty, uh, didn't have a proper goalie coach full time till I was twenty five. So to get to that point in my career at twenty five, obviously I've, I've got. I must have done something right myself naturally. Yeah, uh, and I've enjoyed doing it. It's been hard work. Obviously, you know it's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. Try, yeah. I can't remember everything so pissed half at time now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it's been a roller coaster doing it as well. It makes you realise my whole life on and off the pitch has just been like right, dragging up old memories as well as the good the good stuff. But then not- Yeah, it can be because some of the stuff you like to put on back of your mind and forget about, but lock them up. Yeah, but obviously if I'm doing it right, I've got to get it all out there, and I so does it make you feel better speaking about it though? Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. I've, I've been fine with it. And it's, I've actually used it the other way and think, wow, what a career I've had. Fucking didn't come into football till 20 year old. I don't think you realise, mate. I mean, do you think about your career? No, I do. I didn't for two years after. I still don't think I do. Yeah. I still don't think I think about my career. And I, I've done all right. I didn't do as fucking well as you're too, but I've done all right. But I still don't think about it. When you say you're doing all right, though, I think anybody that's played at any professional level yeah, has done exactly. fucking really well. Yeah. It's, you don't really, it's hard, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's fucking... Same as you say, it's, it's not all fucking hunky-dory all no. the time, is it? It, it? it is a fucking slap. But people do think it's hunky-dory to oh, you're on X amount of money, you must have best life in the world, but it's not always like nah. that. No, not like it. But yeah. I bet it's nice to just set the record straight as well, just even them little records, yeah, like definitely. in terms of Sheffield United leaving... Yeah, you know, not being publicised in the way that it probably should have been, and just running a line under it, saying this is what happened. You know, well, it's not worse than somebody thinking you fucking wasted your curry on a bit of a scrap. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's the yeah, fucking rec- that, that's the record you need to get straight. I did not waste my curry, and I'm a chicken korma man, so my chicken korma were fucking everywhere. Hell yeah, <laughs> fucking, nice pudding, sorry. You fucking play that it, man. <laughs> Hey, I'm butter chicken, man. Oh, I like a butter chicken. I wouldn't even class chicken come as a fucking curry. (laughs) Well, good luck with it all, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, enjoyed that. Out 5th of October. Is that when he's out? I don't even. He hasn't even told me. Hey, October. Hey, October. Text fucking Warren up to you when that book's (laughs) out. First start I've got right all season. I didn't know. He's probably out 20 of me. I won't worry about it. In Northern Ireland. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.